So today we're going to talk about Fnatic because Fnatic had been on since the start of lock-in and the start of the VCT, a 16-game win streak. And in those 16 games, they had only lost four maps. Uh, but yesterday, of course, uh, after this long, long win streak for Fnatic, they finally lost to Team Liquid in the EMEA Grand Final. And so let's find out how did this happen. But before we get into the video today, we need to talk about the sponsor of this video, Gosu Academy. And long-time viewers will know that Gosu Academy is the best way to get better at Valorant pretty quickly. But actually, in two weeks' time, they have something very special coming up. A Tier 1 Mental Performance Coach is going to give a lecture for Gosu Academy users on how to be consistent in game. So if that is something that you struggle with, your consistency, then joining the Gosu Academy right now is probably a very good idea. And my favorite part of the Gosu Academy, the daily 10-mans are still here so that you can get into games with people of a similar skill, trying to get better, no throwers, no toxicity, none of that, just a naturally enjoyable Valorant experience to help you get better as you will then be coached on those 10-mans as well. And for the first 50 people who sign up using the discount code TMV at checkout, you'll get all that for free! For the first month as well. So that's access to the lecture from the performance coach. That's uh, the daily 10 months. That's all the coaching sessions as well. All of that will be free for a month if you use the code TMV for the first 50 people at checkout. But now let's dive into it. And the first thing that you will hear from maybe Fnatic apologists is that they were saving strats. And that's actually true. And we can pretty much prove it because here's their game against Loud in the lock-in finals. Um, and this is by a weird quirk, I guess, of Matt Vito's, the actual last time that they played Fracture until yesterday. Uh, but let's take a look at what they do for their attacking pistol round. Here they are. Uh, and uh, they've just got a full five stack towards Arcade. And yeah, they're just going to send it in towards Arcade over here. And uh, there's a couple things you'll want to note here as they start to come in. You know, they uh, Leo is going to stand in this position just here. Get ready to keep note of that. And uh, they're just going to come in through tower. They smoke it off and they're going to come in onto the site just here. They put a lot of pressure on Les who has to try and leave. Out loud, try and come for this uh, sort of triple flank here. They, uh, you know, go back and forth essentially. And they get the spike down and then Fnatic are just going to play a post plant. So now let's take a look at the game from yesterday and what you will see is Fnatic's pistol round on the first round here. Oh look, it's a full five stack towards Arcade and uh, as we run this round forward, you'll see that Leo's going to end up in the same position. It pretty much looks exactly the same as the one before. Uh, and we will talk about Team Liquid in just a second, but the idea that Fnatic are saving strats and whatnot... I mean, this would kind of point to, yeah, this is true. This also happened on the Haven pistol round where, you know, Fnatic run the the Haven attacking B pistol round that they've run a lot and Team Liquid had a counter for that as well. So you can see that, yeah, the idea that Fnatic might be saving strats has some, some kind of, you know, credence to it. But let's talk about Team Liquid and what they're doing now as well because it wasn't just Fnatic, you know, saving strats and maybe not playing too well. Also, Team Liquid, of course, played pretty well. Um, and uh, this is a good example of it. And I talked about this with EG as well, like the kind of the, the the quickness of thought, right? The speed of thought and people doing things on the fly, utility landing at the right time from across the map, stuff like that. Uh, this is another example of it where they got a little three stack here to start towards drop. And you can see that Safe and uh, Solgas here have continued their kind of push, maybe expecting this pistol round to come out, right? They're going to try and, uh, you know, trap these players in towards Arcade. But we need Yampi here to be able to essentially stun across here. And that's going to set up Redgar for these two kills. He's got a shorty here in tower. And you'll see in just a second as Fnatic kind of start their move uh, actually towards coming to tower. This stun from Yampi is going to start hitting uh, about now. Redgar's got a shorty to try and deal with it. Nat's feeling confident again perhaps that this is the exact same pistol round. We can see that Leo is in his pretty much exact position. You know, feels like, oh, that probably isn't someone here that wasn't before in the one so he's actually going to take the risk to uh you know come and just attack this essentially and you'll see that he ends up winning the round but again just the kind of speed of thought yampi knowing what to expect able to help out his teammates here by this stun gives red guard really this chance and so let's see how it played out but it ain't over yet does Fnatic have what it takes red guard the first to greet them two. he gets two for it he goes back for a little more he wants to make it hurt this is absolutely oh. unbelievable scenes from Liquid. What a way to start things off. <laughs> Three with a shorty. 
And now let's come to round number four, where again, we'll see some of that speed of thought and Team Liquid just playing well in general. Uh, they've gone for a bit of a weird setup here, Team Liquid. Uh, it's quite an interesting idea. They've got this camera here to watch uh, towards B main, and that's actually going to sneak himself underneath. Now, Safe has an op uh, on this line just here. And the idea here is going to be try, I think, and, and kill these people in arcade, you know, using basically between safes up and that's going underneath, hopefully find those kills. The, each team sends out a fade horn, it gets destroyed just here, but Fnatic send a fade horn out towards arcade, so team that could probably have the idea that, yeah, that's where they're coming in. Now, what's about to happen in just a second is you see Yampi here, he's actually going to send a flash. I'm not exactly sure where this flash lands, maybe somewhere around here, and that's just going to try and swing off that flash. Uh... The thing is, unfortunately for him, is Leo has already started walking down, and as Nats swings out, Leo is already kind of in a position to deal with Nats, uh, probably not bothered by that flash. And so, uh, you'll see it just here in just a second. The flash is going to come in, these guys get caught, but we can see that Leo uh, is already underneath and gets that kill on Nats as he's trying to swing out. So the plan doesn't quite go, you know, swimmingly here for Team Liquid. They're now in a 5v4, uh, and they're without their Cypher as well. But just take a look at now what Yampi and Safe are going to do. They know they're in a 5v4. They know that people are obviously somewhat close to them in Arcade. And so they feel like, well, okay, we need to go and make a play. So straight away, Yampi puts himself up in tower. And Safe's going to be the first contact to this, right? He's just going to really walk up and try and find a kill with this off. Right, initially he just kind of stays here on this line, but then he actually starts getting a bit brave and goes, okay, I'll make a play. Does find that kill, instantly blasts backs away, and now Yampi, now that obviously all of the focus is on this op and it's a raise op, so hey, maybe we can trade that kill. Now Yampi swings out and finds another kill on Durka as well. So really, really good stuff uh, from Team Liquid in general. You see it just there. Really, really nice, and all of a sudden they're in a 3v4, but it doesn't stop there either. Right, as the Fade Prowler is coming out, Redgar starts to rotate and uh, he gives Yampi a smoke. They're worried about, uh, you know, kind of towards B main here. You see that Yampi aftershocks it, but now Redgar comes across and just gives Yampi a quick smoke, right? Again, quick thought, you know, we're, we're kind of in the right place. We're helping out our teammates on the other side of the map, you know, as quickly as we can. And Yampi uses this time and the smoke and the sound of the aftershock to mask his steps getting into this smoke. And that actually gives him another kill as well, right? But if this wasn't done so quickly, Yampi doesn't get that kill, and then from here, it's a 4v2, and uh, Safe actually pops his, his Razor there as well. Maybe a little bit overkill on a 4v2, but they win the round, and Leo, with 50 seconds left, is just going to save, and I will save you the time of watching him sit around. Now let's come to round number 7, though, because, of course, it's still Fnatic you are playing, and uh, you probably aren't going to absolutely destroy them. This was, you know, a 13-11. It was a close game. And in this round, uh, we'll see, though, uh, Fnatic actually have all five ults. And uh, we're going to come to a round later on as well where Fnatic also have quite a few ults. And you'll just see how Team Liquid kind of, you know, learn from previous rounds as well. Uh, so in this round, Fnatic are going to do something pretty basic, to be honest. Leo's just going to basically stay here towards the top side and just kind of, you know, kind of feel out what's going on. But basically, these four, they're just going to come into B main, and they're just going to put a killjoy lock down there, and it's going to force Team Liquid to basically go to spawn, right? Uh, and they've actually got a little trap play set up here uh, from Liquid that I've seen them do before as well. Camera here with the breach stun going across, so as soon as the camera sees you stun, and then uh, Nat swings off it, and yay, free kills. Uh, but uh, obviously, as we know, the, the trap will not get sprung, uh, because Fnatic are just going to, you know, basically send a fade, fade prowler down there and uh, then just come and put a lock down underneath and make liquid uh, retake uh, essentially this uh, this site so yeah there goes the lockdown and liquid obviously have to retreat red guard comes and puts a smoke down so that he can cross uh safely but he is going to get detained here as you see but i think basically just wait uh, in comes dirk with the spike and he's going to go and plant that red guard does get detained just there we're going to see in a second leo is going to hit the just the worst timing you'll ever see, right? Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> Just as Nats is coming around the corner, uh, Liquid getting ready to go for this retake now. So Nats obviously picks up this absolutely free kill, and he sends off the Cypher. Now, this Cypher is very interesting because Fnatic are going to win this round. So it doesn't necessarily, you know, obviously it helps them in this round, of course. But I think that this Cypher really helped them in the next round. That we will see. And you'll see what I mean. Because obviously it gives them the information of how Fnatic want to play this post ban. You know, it's just Durka up alone here and towards Tower. And Fnatic, you know, have a heavy stack towards B main. Right, and they're playing very passive. As you would expect, to be honest. With a Breach ult and with a Brim ult. Obviously, yeah, you would expect them. Even though now they're in a 5v4. 
to, you know, still feel like, yeah, we can still obviously win this round. So Team Liquid come in, they start sending off some nades, and they actually send off their own uh, breach shot as they try and attack this. So they try and stop Durka from, you know, catching them crossing, and then they're going to try and aggress on this. The problem is, for them, of course, is the breach shot from Fnatic is going to come back. So as they start to, you know, try and find these kills, Fnatic then go for their own breach shot just as they're coming out of the stun, and Yampi ends up in absolutely no man's land and so dies just there. So a really nice little uh, play by Fnatic. Really good timing there. Uh, understanding of what's going on. They were playing around uh, Liquid's Breach Ult. And now we end up in a bit of a chaotic scenario. You've still got Durka up here. We're basically going to end up in a bunch of 1v1s. We're going to get a 1v1 here. We're going to actually get Chronicles coming back underneath. We're going to get a 1v1 here. And we're going to get a 1v1 between these two. And uh, you'll see though that Fnatic are able, even though they don't win all those 1v1s, uh, they're still able to kind of make it work between all of the ults that they've got and, uh, you know, some of their team play, they're still able to win this round. Shouldn't be on what he could achieve. They couldn't get the half of the defuse either. Dirk is still in between a rock and a half place, but it's safe to remove Alpha. Dirk is still trying to hold into position here. Solgas going to find him. Time Stein to dwindle, they're down to two players, but it's Chronicle and Boaster. Can you hold on to this? Nice, they can! Chronicle doing heroic work there in the end. Even the molly to come through so late on from Boaster. But now let's finish with round number 12, because what we've got in this round is those three ults that Fnatic used in the last round we saw. They've got those exact same three ults, the Breach, Brim, and Killjoy ult. And so they're pretty much going to run the exact same round. But Team Liquid have adapted and they know what to do. First thing is Yampi's actually got an op uh, in this round uh, to start off with. Uh, he's bought an op uh, to start, but he's going to end up with a rifle as well. Uh, and uh, we'll see here, they've got the Cypher Cam here on B main. That will become uh, important as well uh, for later on in this round. But they know pretty much how this round's going to play out. And it does play out as you would expect. So these two, what do they do? They come in this walk on here. They actually try and contest this, right? So you got the op looking down B main for if anyone actually does try and come up here. And you're trying to contest this Killjoy lockdown as well. And uh, you'll see they do try and contest it. It doesn't quite go their way. Uh, the Prowler actually comes out. And so, you know, they, they basically get seen. They get forced to retreat. The Killjoy lockdown does go in. Safe so tries to get the nade onto it, but it doesn't quite land uh, as you see just here. And so the Killjoy lockdown goes off. Yampi actually even misses his shot. So you see that the plan was all there, right? They tried to destroy the lockdown they tried to get a kill with an off a little surprise up from yampi didn't quite work but you could tell that liquid already had a decent idea uh, of what was going on exact same thing happened durka comes in and plants but now let's pause okay because they haven't been able to destroy the lockdown and uh yampi obviously is, is too far gone he basically just hides in the smoke these three have managed to get out but redgar as you can see is on the rope and so this is the, why I said that Cypher in the round previous might have been important. Because what it told them was, yeah, they weren't able to convert that round, but it told them that, you know, when Fnatic use these ults, this is pretty much exactly how they're going to run it. And it's exactly the same where Dirk is going to come into tower and this Cypher Cam is going to ping him coming into tower. So as soon as they see that, you know, they're going to know this is the exact same. And so Redgar, despite, you know, he, they, no one has sent anything towards A main. So Redgar doesn't know that someone isn't here or, or back here or whatever. But he's taking a risk, trusting the Fnatic are just going to do what they did before. And he gets rewarded for that, right? So he comes fully across the rope. And Boaster is in the exact position he was before, right? Playing back here, waiting for his Brimmel. He's, he's going to play super, super safe. I think what happens here, because you can see that Boaster is actually looking this way. I think Boaster was staring at the map or, you know, giving some kind of comms or he just wasn't focused on his aim because, I mean, he is looking this way and you would think you're going to see them on the rope first. He should be, you know, favored to win that fight. He's not actually going to shoot back here, as you'll see as Red Car comes across the rope in just a second. Boaster doesn't even shoot back. So I'm just going to assume that Boaster wasn't really looking at where his crosshair was. And Red Guard just, you know, found a nice time in there to kill him. But that's the Brimalt gone. And now you'll see that Team Liquid's plan is really, really clever. Because with Red Guard in this position now, obviously these guys here in B main, they're in a lot of trouble, right? They're getting flanked from this way. But Nats also is going to carefully approach from underneath. And that will get rewarded later on down the line as well. And Yampi is going to come this way as well. So they're going to pinch on these guys from three different directions. Meanwhile, these two are going to pinch on Durka from two different directions. One of them is going to come down here and one of them is going to come up here and pinch on him in here as well. 
it's really, really clever stuff. It's really, you know, good stuff from Team Liquid. Red Guard, you know, tries to just live basically as long as he can. Puts a smoke down here. And you'll see all the all of the moving parts start to get there, right? So Solkas is coming here to deal with Durka. As I said, Durka did get tagged by this Cypher Cam just here. The Cam as well is telling them that, you know, no one really else is on site, or at least that they can see. Yampi's now getting ready to do this. And you'll see that it all kind of comes together and it's really good. Yes, Redgar will die, but look at the distraction he's causing, allowing Yampi and allowing Nats this space to then come and pinch on these guys from different directions as well. And so you can see Team Liquid had a good idea of what was going on and came up with a really good plan. Demonic levels. He's, he's commanding the attention of three players, by the way. Three of them. All the rest of his team are trying to deal with just one. So Yampi skips ahead. He takes down Alpha. Dirk has what? fallen. What is going on? Nats now throws in his hat to the ring as well. Yeah. This is unthinkable. Team Liquid are playing like a team possessed. It's not just Red Guy. It's not just Nats. It's all of them.